Wow, it's been a little while. Hi everyone. In the last episode of Learn to Fly, I not only cleaned out my apartment, but also my code. Then we took a small hiatus and did some more refactoring on a two episode crossover with Craig on The Boring Show. All three videos will be linked up there and in the description in case you wanted to check it out and get caught up. However, for now, no more refactoring. We're back to building out new features. In this episode, we'll be talking about my process with building out a Dash chatbot, which I like to call, wait for it, the Dashbot. When I was thinking about the UI interfaces that I use in my day-to-day -day life, I'd already put together a newsfeed and an e-commerce interface. So naturally, the next step was a chat interface. Who better to talk to than Dash? Thus, the Dashbot was born. We can say, hi, Dash. We can ask Dash what today's date is, ask Dash to tell us a joke, or even ask Dash for a Flutter video. Anything outside of that, and Dash kind of just says random things. Like the rest of the app, I wanted to focus on the UI so I didn't spend too much time on the back end. As a result, my Dashbot has pretty bare bones functionality. I faked the chatbot by putting together a Dashbot class, which takes some input text, looks for keywords, and spits back a response. Wireframing the UI for Dashbot was a bit easier than the other parts of the app because there weren't quite as many moving parts. You have the chat bubbles, a text field to type in, and the send button. I also wanted to work with a little bit more than just text, so I also added the message sender's profile picture and link previews. Going from wireframe to Flutter code, I made the chat messages section at the top a list view, which contains the list of messages. Each message was a row with the chat bubble and sender profile picture. Messages containing a link are followed by a separate chat bubble, which has the link preview, so those two chat bubbles are wrapped into their own column. Then at the very bottom of the screen is a text field to type a message. I realized I didn't need to use a row to be able to add the send icon since text field already takes a suffix icon. I wrapped the icon in a gesture detector to trigger my on send function. I cropped the sender profile picture to a circle using ClipRect. I know there's already a widget that does this for me, but to be honest, I was on such a roll coding that I totally forgot it existed. I think I just finished typing boxfit.cover when it hit me. That oh, well. Anyhow, maybe I'll fix that in the future. Don't worry though, because I didn't actually try to reinvent the wheel with the rest of the Dashbot. I hopped on over to pub.dev and pulled in the chat bubbles package for my chat bubbles, any link preview for the link preview bubbles, and Linkify for parsing the links from the messages to pass through to the any link preview widget. Though one issue that I'm trying to figure out is why my animation to scroll down to the bottom on new messages work when I send a new message, but not on Dash's new messages. Given more time, I would have liked to implement actual APIs in the back end to have the Dashbot be a little bit smarter. I'd also format the link within the chat bubbles, but the chat bubbles widget only takes a string, so it would have required a little bit more heavy lifting than just adding a text style to the text widget like I did for the dashboard. So this is usually the point in the video where I randomly drop in on Fitz, but because I am a woman of surprises, we're going to randomly interrupt Craig with questions instead. So let's check in with Craig. Craig, why are you there? Cotton, what do you mean? Why aren't you here? Uh, Craig, I went home like four weeks ago. Okay, um, well, that's not where I expected to find you, but I mean, since I've got you on the line, I've got a few questions for you that uh, came up during my process with building the Dashbot. You have time? Well, I've been here for four weeks, so I'm not gonna leave now. Perfect. Then question number one for you. I used a scroll controller to implement the logic to automatically scroll to the bottom when a new message comes in, but now I'm trying to figure out why it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Is there a different or better way to do that? Yeah, that can be a tricky one. I remember a long time ago, I also built uh, a chat app in a, a side project. And what I did was set the reversed to, uh, property to true on mm. that scroll view. Yeah. And then you can always scroll to zero. 
Uh, and and oh. that will always work because sometimes when you're adding things at the bottom, it can get a little confused.、Oh, okay. uh, of course, when you do that, yeah, when you do that, you just need to, of course, reverse the order of all of the widgets that you、of、feed、all. into the scroll controller. Oh, okay.、Uh, but if you set reverse to true, yeah, and then scroll to zero, I think that'll work pretty well. Okay, that does sound a lot better because, especially right now, I think my code is probably a little bit. More complex than it probably needed to be, so I think. Thank you, Craig. I will pull that into my code and let's see. Let's see if it works. Cool. Thank you. So on to question number two. Then my list view builder code、um, for the chat messages was kind of like particularly chunky.、Um, so this is primarily because there were so many conditions on how the layout should look. So you know, for example, the profile picture should appear on the left versus the right,、uh, depending on who sent the message, or you know, what color the text bubble should be, again, depending on you know who sent the message. Whether there's a link preview that we should include as a link preview, you know, like it's just like、uh, so many conditions, and I just ended up breaking it out into separate widgets. So there's less widget code now, but is there a better way to approach this type of code in the future? I mean, overall, like it's the same amount of code, but just I have separate widgets, so it looks less,、um, looks less crazy. Yeah,、uh, chat apps do. You know, a lot of us again build these kind of intro chat apps, but once you start to actually include all the features in a real chat app, as you've experienced, it, it balloons pretty quickly.、Uh, It sounds like what you did is pretty good. You know, you found the the chunks that were maybe reusable or just. You know, kind of deep subtrees of widgets and broke those out into their own,、uh, and and now you're worried about the kind of complexity of determining how to bring them back together in that main build method, and for that I would just say, you know, eventually some code is going to have to make these decisions. Some code is going to have to check some conditionals and. And branch based on you know the nature of the message or the nature of the whatever.、Mm -hmm. And if you're ever feeling kind of self conscious about maybe having too involved of a of a widget that you've just made, I would encourage you to look in some of the material widgets build methods.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do a lot. There is a lot going on. Like look in the scaffolds build method, and it's enormous. There's so much juggling it has to do. To position everything just right, if and only if these other things are or aren't there,、yeah. and you know that logic just has to exist.、Mm -hmm. There, there's no way around it. So I think what you've written sounds pretty good. Okay, cool. And then so that leads me to my last question for you, which was, well, any other feedback you have for me on the UI that you know, like that? I guess now that you're sitting there, you've had a lot of time to review it in the last four weeks, right? Would you have built it any differently? Well, the one thing that that jumped out at me because I think it's it's quite a strong chat UI. You use the chat bubbles、uh, a plugin or package, which is is very strong. The one thing I did notice is that there's no timestamps on any of the messages,、mm -hmm. and you know that's kind of a nice feature to be able to scroll back. You know, maybe you know you send someone a message on Tuesday, and you're like you're scrolling back to find it, and you don't know how close you are to Tuesday yet.、Mm -hmm. uh, and but the the tricky thing about timestamps is if you just add one on every message, it it really kind of clutters it up.、Mm -hmm. So. Some chat apps will—they'll kind of group them themselves by messages that were all sent together. They'll just get one timestamp, and、mm -hmm. you know, then if two hours pass before the next message, okay, we'll include another timestamp. Yeah,、uh, and and that takes kind of some more pre-processing. That'll actually make the build method we were talking about before even more complicated, as it has to figure out、mm -hmm. when to insert、uh, a timestamp.、Mm -hmm. But I think that would be、uh, a big improvement on on the chat UI for、mm -hmm. you know the end user. Uh, but you will have to accept that you will be writing more logic in that build method. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm thinking if I were to approach, you know, adding timestamps like that, I could see myself maybe adding, you know, what's called, you know, I don't know, milestone timestamp or something like that, so that it could check to see, okay, when was like, you know, like the logic would be, okay, when was the, the last message that was sent, and then when's like this current message, and then. In the case, or it's like say if it's been over say two hours、uh, difference or something, just add in that that widget and that timestamp. Does that sound about right? Like what you're talking about? 
Yeah, and, and I would recommend drawing inspiration from other chat apps. Just mm -hmm. open things on your phone and scroll through and kind of get a sense for when did that app think it was important to to you know indicate when the message was sent mm -hmm. because you know, they, they've probably done a lot of research on it, so yeah. just steal what they do. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, that's cool. I think I'll try to check that out. I I believe the chat bubbles does come with like a timestamp option that you can enable, but I would have to double check on oh, that. Oh, nice. So cool, thank you for reminding me of that. Awesome. Well, that's all the questions I had for you, Craig. Thank you so much for joining on such short notice uh, from The Boring Show. I guess I kind of interrupted you there, but uh, I appreciate you making the time. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I've literally been doing nothing for a month, so this is my first time talking to a person. <laughs> okay, well, then we'll have to catch up soon, Craig. <laughs> Sounds good. See you, Khan. Thanks, Craig. Now, a question for you all. If you're building out a dashbot, what would be your must-have feature? Also, bonus points, if you watch the Boring Show crossover episodes, please let us know what you think. Would you like to see more crossover episodes in the future? Craig is awesome and I love working with him, so I'm really kind of hoping that you'll say yes. But that's pretty much it for the Dashbot. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join me on this episode of Learn to Fly, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.